afternoon. Welcome and thank you everyone for coming along to this wonderful Accor Plus event. So without further ado, I'll introduce Jules, Samantha and Lizzie. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Tea with Jules. This is so cool because I never really get to do it in front of anyone except for my crew. So this is heaps better, if I'm being honest. Yeah. So thank you to Accor for having us today. It's a real treat to have some high tea. And it was lovely to meet everybody out, out on the wall. Bit of paparazzi <laughs> happening. I want to introduce these two lovely ladies with me today. I'm very excited to be chatting with them both. This is Lizzie and she heads up the amazing brand called We Are Kindred. We are all wearing, yes, we are all wearing a piece from the collection today. Sammy skirt, this beautiful dress. Lizzie wears it every single day, so she's a lucky duck. It's like I'm going to a wedding every day <laughs> at school drop-off. Yeah. <laughs> We're not jealous. We're not it's jealous. Fine. It's fine. <laughs> you look gorgeous. So thank you for, for loaning us your beautiful, amazing okay. pieces to wear. Um, and, of course, the lovely Samantha Jade, who is – yes. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> She's a pop star, let's be honest. That's what I like to call her. She's a She does call me that. <laughs> she's an amazing, amazing singer, entertainer, performer. She's also an actress and a dancer. So this is great. Who my feels ego, like Jules? an underachiever. Yes. No, she's amazing. <laughs> but we're giving her the day off today. And she's just going to sit down and talk. So we're not going to make her sing today because this is all about delving a little bit deeper into, I guess, the behind the scenes of what makes these wonderful women and yourselves because I'm, I'm sure you're going to be thinking about your own stories and your own lives and things that you've been through. You'll probably re relate to some of the things that the girls will say. And we just want to make it about the real stuff today because these girls work in an industry, as do I, which is quite – a shiny, perfect sort of a world from the outside. You know, you get to see the beautiful floral dress skimming along the ocean. Someone's just travelled to Paris and, you know, got the wind's caught the hair right at the very right moment and the lighting's per – and this it's because they're wearing the dress, you know, that that all happened. And that's just a moment in time. But everything that had to happen in order for that dress to be captured in that moment, Lizzie knows about. And it's not glamorous. It's not glamorous. <laughs> or shiny, no. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get down to that and Sammy too. You know, you see you see little Sammy pocket rocket singing her songs in her beautiful dresses and belting out these tunes and the songs, but you don't know how long that took to write the song, how many years this girl has been at it perfecting her vocals and Corey and getting to this place where she can actually do that. And we all know that. We all know that. But when you see the shininess of it, you're a bit like, oh, you know, it's, you know, how? How do they do that? We're going to find out today. How does that sound? Sound good? <laughs> so, Lizzie, let's start with you. Um, we are kindred. It's feminine. It's floaty. It's floral. It's all things womanly. Love it. Um can you tell me a little bit about how you actually started? Because you didn't start as a designer. You started how? Um, no, I actually um, have a journalism background by trade and I worked for a number of years in women's fashion magazines. So I worked at Marie Claire for 10 years and then I worked on Madison for 10 years. And then and I, in those last three years I was – the editor of Madison and then people stopped buying magazines and Madison closed and I had to make an entire team redundant and it was awful. Um, and so I, after 18 years of working really hard and being really – and thinking no one will ever make me redundant because I've worked until 2am for the last decade, but they did. So I came down with a big giant – thump. My sister had been talking about launching uh, launching something and doing something together and I thought, oh yeah, I'll help her out a little bit for a while and then I'll, then I'll find another big media job. But then something just clicked in me and I had seen, because um, I'd, I'd never viewed myself as, a, a, as someone who would start a business. I was always a really great employee. I hadn't ever thought that I would, that this would be my path. Um, 
And then something just clicked and I thought, oh, my God, I actually I could see um, a gap in a very overcrowded market um, for what We Are Kindred does. Um, you know, I used to edit fashion stories in the fashion cupboard um, at, at Madison and the fashion editors will come in and, you know, show all of these beautiful clothes. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, but who's got $2,000 to spend on a sun frock? Like, where's the <laughs> where's the let's get real here, let's, you know, go back, you know, when we're not, we're certainly not a high street brand where you can buy it really, really cheaply, but we're certainly, you know, we don't expect you to spend $1,000 on a sundress. So I'd seen a little gap in the market for that, we call it sexy, pretty, um, sort of, you know, not too girly, but very feminine pieces. And that's where, so we decided to just go for it. And now I'm, yeah, I can't even imagine not doing it. We're five, we're five years in now. I get to work with my sister every day. Um, I have no mum guilt because I do both. Yep. I've got two small children and I leave for pick-up and then I just log back on later at night. So it's uh, it's lots of hard work and everything, but it is definitely um, something that I'm immensely grateful for that that we came up with the idea and we went for it. Well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. We're, we're definitely going to get back to the mum guilt thing because – that is a real life situation, right? Mm. Any mums in the house? <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that and how you get through that. Mm. But if you could take us back to that transitional f- mm. phase when you were coming out of Madison, like that, that was your whole existence and mm. life and everything you knew, magazines, that's a skill, that's an industry. Yeah. You're having a baby, you're yeah. freaking out a little bit because you like working, you want to have a career, yeah. you want to do something that's successful, mm-hmm. but you're a bit like, I don't know how to, I, what, I don't know how to no, I get through this. Um, when all of, when all of this happened, like I was, I was not okay. I was broken. I woke up every day and cried and I was I was mourning something it, and even though it's a job and you feel silly to mourn something that's not you know it, it's certainly not you know I had beautiful family and there, you know I, there were so many things to be grateful for but it was very hard for me to see through all of that I, it, I my ego had been completely bruised I missed my team I really I was really struggling and and then it was like oh my god but what if what if this doesn't work and what if I don't ever find happiness at work again? What if that was it? What if it's over for me? Um, so, and I think, you know, we all have that, we all have those doubts all the time. I still have them, still like daily, but I think that that's one of the things that also pushes you to keep going. Um, and I think too, and I've learned through this business that <clears throat> Making mistakes is actually, as you know, they can really hurt your pocket. The, they can hurt um, all sorts of things, but they also make you grow. And we've, if you learn from them, which we do. So I feel like, I feel like Kindred has allowed me to to grow far more than um, I would have had I stayed in the career that I was in for for another five years. So I am glad that it happened. But no, there were days where. I, oh, I didn't want to, you know, I just didn't know what to do. And, and, there, and there were the the very real stresses about owning, well, the bank owning a house, owning a house in Sydney and not being able to pay the mortgage and all of those things. So it wasn't just, oh, I want to go to work because it makes me feel good. I actually needed to be able to pay the bills and, you know, so there were those stresses as well. But um, I think, you know, I've always been a really hard worker. That's probably the one thing that some... Um, that I really do have going for me. I've always just worked as hard as I need to work. So, and that's what I did. I just, what is it? Head down, bum up, and you just yeah. <laughs> and you just do it. And that's what we've done for the last five years. And it's just starting to to work. Yeah. Five years yes. later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's the other thing. It's like nothing is overnight. Something might seem like it's an overnight success, but yeah. actually it's a lifetime. Well, and that's an 18-year career in, in in magazines before that and the five years. So, you know, it's – and I could – the business wouldn't be where it is today if I didn't have all of that, back, that background, even though they're different industries. I still did learn, you know, and I guess this is the thing, if you're changing careers and if you're, you know – or even not changing careers, if you're just moving to a different job, I think, you know, what you've learnt before you 
it, you know, is always going to hold you in good stead. And that's what, you know, I, I, I became very good at managing people and managing quite big budgets, but for someone else when I was in, in, in media and now those things, you know, they're working to our advantage at Kindred because um, I had to do them for someone else first. Yes. Yeah. It's all appliable. Yeah. <laughs> the brand is called We Are Kindred. Um, I looked up why because, you know, I do my research. Um, <laughs> because you and your sister, uh, you feel like you're kindred spirits. Yeah. And I heard you. Am, is that right? Am I right? No, that yep. is right. Okay. We used to... Um, we used to watch Anne of Green Gables at my grandma's house pretty much every weekend that we would go there and and Shirley always talked about kindred spirits and that's where so that's where it came from yeah Shirley and Shirley and with an E yeah (laughs) um yes so that's where it came from and we are we're kindred spirits we're best best friends we cannot imagine doing life without her um, and that's and that's why it has made. I, yeah, I don't think I could be doing this business with anyone else. Yeah, yeah. I heard you once say that um, you guys are kindred, and you sort of your bigger picture. So you you look when there's something happening in the business, you you care mostly about the big stuff and yeah. the little stuff. You kind of let go, which I think is m- most relationships. I know, yeah. like definitely in a marriage that's what you kind of like if you agree on you know your morals and your your standards and how you're going to raise your babies and you know you how you you're not going to agree on not picking socks up off the floor yes you have to choose your battle exactly right yeah um yes (laughs) but i'll still fight for that (laughs) guy sebastian does not pick up socks yeah i still i still i will still nag for that yeah (laughs) um but no it's very similar georgie and i um georgie's my sister and business partner she and i agree on all of the big things that matter really and you know and if we don't occasionally it's a we'll come around to the other one's point of view pretty quickly um and then you know and we can have you know the odd you know I can tell if she's in a mood she can tell if I'm in a mood and you kind of just let it go because she's sisters but the little things it's just not worth it they're over too quickly and you know it's fine and we don't have a we don't have the luxury of having the time or resources available to sweat the little stuff because there's only a few of us in the office um and you know george george went off and had a baby last year so i've been running the office with my two little ones like it's you know it's a juggle so yeah don't sweat the small stuff but the big stuff is absolutely you have to agree on those yeah you have to have a clear vision yeah let's talk about the babies yeah, two they're of not them. babies anymore, but they Aww. feel like it. I know. <laughs> we're, we have similar age babies. Um, mine are six and four, two boys, yep. whirlwinds. Mm. Um, <laughs> Lizzie has a two? boy and a girl. Yeah, so I've got a seven-year-old daughter. Or she just turned seven, going on 17. <laughs> and yeah, she's like a little mini version of me. And I think, oh, God. <laughs> um, and then my little boy, Max, is just a just a delight and happy and very physical but um yeah no they're amazing they're beautiful but gosh they're hard work <laughs> yeah it's, it's true really and tricky. this age is yeah it's yeah. a lot they need everything how do you go with that I mean not only do you work you own the business you own the work so it all comes down to you and your sister and you've got two babies you're a wife there's a lot to handle my yeah. question is Lizzie yeah. mm. can we have it all or is this <gasps> A bit of a joke <laughs> on um, us. I think that we can have it all but not at the same time. So, I mean, at the moment I I guess I have it all except for any time to myself, um, which is fine, but they're happy and and the business is, you know, and that I, I choose to spend my time working on the business. Um But I don't believe – like when I – and I used to run stories like this on Madison all the time about women having it all and I was this gung-ho feminist who thought that we could. (laughs) If if I still had my job in corporate, there is no way that I could be mothering the way that I do because because there aren't enough hours in the day. So I'm – I feel very fortunate that, yes, even though it's my own business and that comes with those stresses, it's still – mine so I can 
you know, two days a week I can leave early to do pickup and it's I don't have to run that by someone. So I, I feel like workplaces – um, and, you know, and now that I'm the owner of a business, I realise how difficult it is to just say, well, everyone should just become more flexible for so that working hours are the same as school hours. I mean, that doesn't work either. Our kids go to school for six days, six hours a, a day, 180 days a, a, a year or something. I mean, the workforce can't run like that. But it's definitely broken. Um, where, and I think this is why more and more women are going out and doing their own thing because it does make it flexible. It makes it more possible to have it all, you know. Um, certainly don't have – but there are sacrifices that you then make. You know, I don't have the steady income. I don't have the, the, um, the assurance every month that there will be certain amounts of money in the bank, etc. However, I can be more flexible with our life. So, you know. You give and take. It's mm. the ebb and the flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And every decision comes with a consequence, I think. Absolutely. It doesn't, doesn't matter which, which way it goes. There's always a good and a bad, a pro and a con, no matter what. Mm. And I think too, you know, I've had ups and downs and, you know, I've, you know, like everyone, everyone has, has you know, relationships that don't work and friendships that break down and jobs that don't work out, etc. And sometimes you are completely on top of the world and sometimes – you're at the bottom, but, you know, it, you come back up. It's like that um, Dr. Seuss book, Other the Places You'll Go. Yeah. And that's what, like, you know, I've been reading that to the kids recently and it, that's what life is like, you know. So even if it's even if it's hard sometimes, it'll pick yourself back up and you'll, you know, it'll improve. <laughs> put on a floral dress and yeah, get on, on with your life. Yeah, put on a frock and you'll <laughs> feel better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, tell me about um, We Are Kindred. If you had a five-year scope, mm. where would you see Oh, the world domination. I mean, yeah, everyone will be wearing course. floral frocks. Yes. Which, by the way, years, can yeah. I just say <laughs> that everyone looks so fabulous today. I feel like there's a lot of floral mm. happening and we appreciate that offering because yeah. we love a floral. We do. Um, look, I think um, in terms of five years, I mean, we're definitely – we're growing the business quite substantially at the moment um, internationally. We're quite we're, – we're going really well in the Middle East because we're a little more modest and women like to cover their arms and, don't, you know, so that's, um, that's working. Um, I feel like, you know, I know that it's just fashion but I do feel like, you know, when you – when you put on a pretty pretty dress and it improves your mood and you're nicer to people and then the, you know and the world you know if you're if you're smiling at people and they're smiling back then you know the, the world's a, a happier place so we're certainly not changing we're not doctors and we're not changing lives but I think you know if if I had my way I would see we are kindred become more of a household uh, name and um, you know making women making women feel good about themselves because that's ultimately what we should be doing, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mm -hmm. I feel great today in my oh, You look so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I feel friendlier, definitely. <laughs> um, well, we look forward to seeing everything that you, you girls get up to. We can't mm -hmm. wait. Um, if I could just ask something about fashion. Yeah. When you're putting together a new collection for the brand, do you look to the past? Do you look to the future? Um, we we don't tend to look at trends so much and we certainly – like we're not trying to be all things to all people. Georgie and I tend to just – um, design pieces that we want to wear <laughs> and if we don't like wearing them then we don't put them into production so um, so it, and it, and because we've got quite different we do have quite different styles she's she's far more boho than I am and I'm a bit more um, streamlined um, so we don't t yeah it's not like we're sitting around going oh what will people like we just we, we start with the print first um, so we like I think lots of design houses would do it the other way around. They start with shapes and silhouettes. We start with the print and then we go and then we work backwards. I like that. Mm. That's good mm. because if you're not going to wear it yourself, it's your own thing. Totally, Who else and is you can't wear be it? all things to all people, and we yeah. and we're not. You know, yeah, it's, I um, love that. You know, we're like you know, women aren't coming to us for top to toe black. They won't find any of that there. Um, you know, it, it, it's we we have a specific a, a specific aesthetic, and we just stick to that and evolve it every collection. Yeah. yeah. My last question for you, Lizzie, is: What do you do to take care of mind, body, spirit? Um, this sounds 
completely counterproductive. I wake up at 4.45 what? in the morning. Um, it's the only way that I'm a nice person because my <laughs> because my husband goes – he's a builder and he goes to work at 6.15. So the only way that I stay sane is if I go and I have an hour by myself. I, I wake up, it's still dark, which I quite like. I have a cup of tea when no one else is asking me to do anything for them. Um, and then I go and I exercise. I do – I like sometimes I completely – thrash it out at the gym sometimes I do Pilates or yoga or whatever but yeah so five mornings a week I wake up at 4 45 in the morning and that keep that's my one hour where no one can stop me because if I try to do it you know at night or whatever like the children will be barricading the door telling me they don't want me to leave so I just um yeah 4 45 in the morning so that's my thing what time do you go to bed uh, really, sometimes I go to bed before the children <laughs> um, or with the children because, yeah. yeah, lazy parenting. It's just easier. Um, about 8.45, 9 o'clock. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to if you're going to wake up in the fours, definitely. Yeah. Lizzie, thank you for your, your no wonderful insights and inspiration, waking no up problem. early, you know, <laughs> yep. wearing our florals to school pickup. Yep, school pickup. Yep, I went in like a gold Lurex dress yesterday. I looked like I was going to a ball. But oh well. <laughs> I've done that before. Where are you going tonight? Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just something I yeah. threw on. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries. Mm. Oh, you give her a round of applause. And moving on to lovely Samantha Jade. We know you as Sammy. You um, you came into our lives via my husband, um, both on a riding trip in Sweden, both in the same building but in different rooms, doing different projects, riding with different people. And your mum was a bit of a fan of Guy. My mum, because I was only sixteen, and so my mum was travelling with me, and I could hear her in the in the lounge going oh my gosh, Sammy's going to die. She's going to die when she sees you. We voted, we voted. And I was like, what is that? That's going to be. And I just saw this fro because he had the fro then. I was like, Guy Sebastian in Sweden. It was so random. So you met Guy and became fast friends. And then he said, you need to meet my wife because you're the exact same person. First, second, we met. We bonded over Britney Spears and... We've been friends ever since. <laughs> Can you just for anyone who doesn't know your journey, which is quite a, a full-on one, um, seeing your age and you're so young, you've done so much in your little life. Can you just give us a nutshell version of how it all began yeah. and where and how it got to you? Well, I, um, I'm from Perth originally and I, I grew up always kind of, you know, wanting to be a performer. I always wanted to be a singer and I would sing around the house and my mum and dad were adamant about no 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 I mean you know that's great and we're gonna definitely support your dreams but school's important and you need to do that and you need to focus and and um and be a kid and be a normal kid and that was really nice and then when I got to 16 I had a, a company approach me from America and they asked me to fly over and so my mum and I went over just thinking, fun, we get to go to Disneyland finally. And so we went over and we met um, this team and they said, we'd love for you to move over and live here and now, you know, sing and, and this will be your, your, your job basically. Uh, and so my mum, they, they really struggled with that because my brothers are a lot smaller than me. They're seven and nine years younger. So my parents were like, oh, I don't know if we want to pull them out of school, but this is a huge opportunity for Sammy. And so we all went as a family because we couldn't split um, split up. So we all went and uh, my dad became my brother's homeschool teacher and my mum travelled with me everywhere. And then kind of cut a long story short, by the time I was 21, I was actually dropped by the label. Which, uh, which really sucked because I was only 21. And I was like, my career's over already. It didn't even start. I'm so young. Um, and then I decided to move home. I worked for my dad because on my resume, the only thing was pretty much songwriting or singing. And that doesn't get you far in Perth. So my dad was like, look, um, you can work for me. You can count stock. It's all I've got going right now. And I was like, okay, great. So I did that. I would always be singing in the, in the warehouse. It was a mining warehouse. And my dad and my mum and dad really pushed me. They were like, you're, you're supposed to do music. It's what you love. It's what, you know, brings you joy. And so I'd seen the ads for X Factor and um, called Jules. And I was like, is it weird that Guy's on there though? 
he's a judge and I know you guys and that's going to be really weird. And, um, and Guy had a really good chat to me and he's like, look, I, I actually think I can't help you at all. It's probably going to be more of a hindrance than anything, but go for it, try it out. And, um, and I tried out and after being in the bottom two three times, which is more than any contestant in the history of the show, I ended up winning, <laughs> which was insane. And then from there, it's just been, you know, it's, it's been great because I've, I've gotten to live my dream, but it is always, it is always up and down. But that's the, the nutshell of the, of the career. It's a good one. It's a good story. Every now and again, I'll just turn to Sammy and go, you won because yeah. <laughs> sometimes I can't believe it like it's such a big deal like that's a really massive achievement it's huge thank you I've watched you go through the ups and the downs and you know it's not it's not just career that happens in life there's life happens in life there's you know if your family and boyfriends and you know like stuff stuff is happening all the time and as somebody who's in the spotlight in front of people, um, you have to get up. And music is one of those things, especially when you're performing live to an audience. Your job on the stage is to take people out of their own life and into this fun, happy, whimsical world where they've forgotten everything that's just happened that day. They've forgotten what's about to happen. They're in the moment and that, that as an entertainer is your job. But when you are the entertainer, and you're also a person and you've got stuff going on and things are happening in your life, what is that like for you when you're – is it that Katy Perry moment? You know, I don't know if you guys have seen that that documentary of Katy Perry and she's having a really terrible day. She's about to perform to this stadium and she's literally heaving, crying underneath the stage and she's just like about to go on, the thing's about to lift her onto the stage and she was just like this, like, It was like, wow, she just went, she became Katy Perry and she just went into this zone. Is that what it's like? Is it like I'm putting this on, I've just got to get through it and I'll think about life later? You could getting on with your job. I think so. Um, yeah, I think because you have to. Like I remember so there's so many times that um, like the, the day that I actually found out my mum was sick, um, I was – on a shoot I was shooting a Westfield campaign which was huge and I was so excited and she was so excited and it was a massive massive day and um it was a flat lay shoot so I was literally lying in the most awkward position I was flat laying with all this stuff around me and I just found out I just no one knew but I'd just gotten a call that she um had had been diagnosed with cancer and I, I was in I was in Sydney and I couldn't fly back I had to do this shoot and I I just I had to be present and those moments are really really hard and even you know um you know certain performances when you know you've lost someone or you know you especially for me cancer anything with cancer is really you know it's a trigger so anytime I perform anything to do with that my mind goes there but I have to go on stage and sing and you know perform for people but I think that that whole Katy Perry thing is true you just go into this zone and you know that it's not about you in that moment it's about the audience and it's about giving them a moment to you know disappear and 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 just have a good time but it is hard sometimes especially ballads oh god that's why I cut ballads for my sex I'm like I can't sing a sad song I'll lose it yeah so stick to the up tempos for this one yeah, and you're good at the uptempo as you are. I'll give you that. <laughs> Thanks, Jules. Um, you mentioned your mum um, um, when she, you know, when she got diagnosed with cancer, and she has since passed a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, it's the wor- it's just the hardest thing to go through as as a person because you know I knew I was gonna cry. Sorry, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't look at you. Yeah, I'll just look over at you guys. What would be your advice to somebody who has been through it, is currently going through it, or God forbid in the future might have to face something like this? It's um, it's so tough because <laughs> – oh, God. <laughs> Messes. The older I get, I am a basket case. <laughs> Always crying. Um, hit 30 and it was just like cry at drop of a hat. Um, it was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through because it was such a long journey. She, she got sick and we got told she was sick and we were like – 
what? She, my mum was so fit. She was a goji berries and almonds girl. She was a walk on the beach. She was always into the latest, you know, fitness and crystals. And she was just all oh, that person. And then it just hit us like a ton of bricks. And we only got um, six months to, to kind of go through this journey. And it was up and down. And, you know, one minute the chemo was working, one minute it wasn't. And I moved my – I went back to Perth and we actually – it was so bad that we had to um, – we had to stay every night. So, we'd do shift work. So, my brothers would do like all day and then till 3 a.m. And then I'd pick up at 3 a.m. and do the rest. And she couldn't walk anymore. And, you know, we just saw – we saw her just just fall apart and I realized in that moment that the hardest thing in the world to do is feel helpless to not be able to help someone you love and and to to not be able to just fix it and and take it that was hard um but I I think that it's important to have strong people around you I mean I've had the amount of times I'd call Jules and I'd be like I'm gonna lose it um, she kept me together. My friend Zach kept me together. My dad and my brothers kept me together. And I knew that I was loved. And I think if you know you're loved, then you can get through anything. Very well said. Well done. I'm keeping that together. No, I'm sorry. I went there. I didn't know I was going to do that, but <laughs> thank you. Because I think it's important to share to share those stories. I think it's it makes it makes you a real person. It makes you somebody who it, people are the sum of all parts. People are everything that they've been through in their lives, and those are the things that you make you stronger and better and deeper and wiser and know more stuff and make you appreciate what you have in your life I think that's what oh, yeah. things like that do you just oh, yeah. you can never see the world the same ever no. again and I think as well like my job people think you know oh it's all about you it's all about how you look and the glam and the you know being adored and being a pop it's it's not that that's not what it's all about you know it, that that is what keeps me going, my family and the realness of life and friends. And my mum, when she was sick in the hospital, she said, every day I wake up and I can't put my, she couldn't put her feet down on the floor anymore, but she said, every day I wake up, I open my eyes and I say, thank you. That's the first thing I do. Because if you're not grateful, you, you just, you can't truly appreciate anything. So even in, you know, the darkest of times in her sickest moment, she was still grateful. She was grateful for the nurses. She was grateful for us. She gave them all presents. Every time I'd be at the airport, I'd be flying back. If I had to fly here and do a quick gig and I'd do five hour flight here, do the gig. And then I'd train myself to go to sleep on the plane because I was so, it was so hard to not check my phone and know how she was. So I would, I would just, don't know how I did it. It was great actually. I hope I can do that when I have kids. I'd train myself to go to sleep and then I'd wake up straight away, check my phone and I'd have a text from my mum going, hey, Sammy, so you know there's that new Victoria's Secret at the airport. Can you run in there and get the um, bombshell shower gel because I'm giving it to Nurse Jenny. She would buy presents for everyone in the hospital. I mean, she was so selfless in that moment. And that just made me look at the world in such a different way and be so grateful that I get someone to even do my hair and makeup. Like, who am I? That's amazing. So, it, yeah, it really brought me to a different place and everything now that I do in life is from a totally – totally different standpoint yeah and that's how your mum talked as well that's ex how she just said exactly exactly how she she talks so happy always so happy um so beautiful thank you for talking about your mum thank you I know that's hard for you to do I really appreciate it what is it about music singing sharing that gift I was I was actually at a um at an event, um, I was doing some presenting there and Sammy was the special guest artist. And, I mean, I, I'm very privileged that I get to hear good singing pretty much every day in the house that I live in. So, um, you know, I, I feel very, very lucky that I have, you know, a special gift around me on a daily basis. But when your friend is good at it too, it's a, even more of a bonus. But I was in the room and Sammy started singing and there was like a physical, like people were like, like a gasp of the people around me um, about your voice and like really people were, were commenting and and 
gasping. That's the only word. It was. They, they were like astounded at, at how good your voice was because it was just Sammy and a piano and then this voice that just comes out. Um, ha- what What is that? What does that feel like to be able to give that gift to somebody? Yeah, it's an amazing feeling to be able to stand in a room and sing and be able to touch someone because I grew up in a, in a household full of music. My mum and dad both weren't musicians or singers, but they used to play music all the time. And I'll never forget um, my mum and dad used to play Unchained Melody. That was That's my dad's favourite song. And sometimes they'd dance in the lounge room. And I remember how that made me feel, you know, like watching them be in love and, and how that how special that made me feel. And to be able to be someone who now can do that is is just – it's uh, – uh, it's an unspoken uh, thing. It's an unspoken language to be able to do that. It's it's a really incredible feeling because I know how it feels to receive it. So, yeah, it's it's a gift. It's it's a God given thing that I I'm thankful for. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. And but I, but you have to work on your craft. You can't just wait. You can't. You didn't just wake up one day and go, oh, I can just do. It. Yes, it's a God given gift, but you had to work on that craft. And I've seen you getting getting better and better and better as the years go on. And even, I mean, did you guys watch X Factor when Sammy was on X Factor? Yeah. I mean, she was amazing then. But I feel like the more you've done it, the more professional you've gotten, you've, you know, you can belt it out even more. You learn to take care of your vocal cords and your body in order to do that because that's the other thing is that it's not just, you know, rocking up to work and, Type and some e- emails and off you go. It's like your your job is your body. Yeah. Your job is your voice. So all of those things come into account. How has yeah. that kind of – how have you survived it over oh, years? You know, you do have to really um, make sure that, you know, be, being, being – f- fit in general because obviously yeah it's all about your stamina on stage and and your vocals and and making sure that you're mentally okay I have struggled with anxiety quite a lot I I have it in and out and that's something I have to be really you know ahead of and make sure that I do take the time for self-care because you you really are overwhelmed by a lot of energy all the time you know meet and greets as you know we do we do those and and there's a line of people and you don't want anyone to feel like you're not excited to meet them because you are. You are excited to meet everyone. You're so thankful that they're buying your albums. They're the reason you're able to do what you do and you, and you want them to feel that. But it is exhausting because you are giving and then you're performing and then you're flying and then you're, you know, so um, I think self-care is a huge part of it. That's something I've learned the older I've gotten to and, and I think that my um, my mum, yeah, also had that and I now don't have her to ask about it. But I, I remember asking my dad the first time it hit me quite strong. I was like, what is this feeling? I'm not an anxiety girl. I don't get that. And it's real. It happens. So you have to make sure that you you really do take time. Time is so important. It's the, it's the biggest gift you can give someone, especially yourself. And so I've learned that, yeah, taking time out – and just going, no, I can't commit to that. Like you say, sometimes you really do have to do that. Yeah. What about when you're in a busy period? So album drops, single drops or whatever it is, it's back to back at sunrise, you're up at four, you've got this person, you've got to go to radio, you've got to talk to that, you've got to go and sing somewhere, you've got to, you've, by the time the day's done, you've done 80 performances of the same song over and over, you've talked about yourself all day for two weeks straight, and you're like, I'm so sick of myself. <laughs> that is true. That's the biggest part. That is so hard because you're like, you know, I'll come home and, and my, my boyfriend's so sweet. How's your day? What did you do? And I'm like, I don't, I, I don't want to talk about myself anymore. I want to talk about you. How are you? And because um, that's exhausting, talking about yourself. And you just feel like, oh, God, again oh, no, about me. And you're today. making me do it, Jules. <laughs> Sorry. No, but this is very different. It's the same questions all the time. But in busy periods, it's all about, um, you know, lots of water having the right people to ask questions to, such as your best friends. My dad's always a phone call away. I'm always like, 
dad, I'm exhausted. And he reminds me, go, have you, have you eaten? And I'm not talking about a Kit Kat and some salt and vinegar chips. I'm talking, have you eaten? I'm like, no, I haven't done that properly. Or I haven't reminded myself to have, you know, a drink that's not coffee. You know, so I think that um, it always comes back to great people and, and having a strong a strong circle and being able to get good advice. Like I'll ask Jules all the time before I make any big decision, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Because you you need your people. You always need your people. They, they make your job enjoyable and they make your life doable. I think it's true. What about you have this great, amazing way of balancing being a public person and having a private life that's very private. You have a really great way of, of you know, giving us what, what we want from you, but also we don't know everything about you. Is that on purpose? Is that like a conscious decision that you've made? I think, yeah, definitely. Because we everything we do do, especially now with social media and, you know, Insta stories and all that, you can see everything. So you have to have a little bit of it for yourself. And um, my relationship especially is something I don't, really talk about much or put out there because that's the, that's the something I have for me and I think that's really important to be able to make it work um, and my family life too that I keep very very private because you know what I do is is what I do and I love that people love my music and and love you know my stage persona and all of that and they need to know who I am and I think that as long as they know my morals and and that you know, I'm a nice girl. That's all I really hope for. That's enough. And then you've got to keep the rest for, for you and your family. You do a great job of, you know, the persona of a nice girl. <laughs> she's not that Even nice. Even though it's no, fake. that's not true. No, <laughs> she's so nice. She really is. Um, okay, I've got one last question for you and it's about your album that's about to come out. Sammy's, I know, so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy has been working on a Christmas album and he doesn't love a Christmas album. I cannot wait for this. Tell me everything. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. That I, I'm a Christmas person, like a Christmas sweater person, the earrings. I love it. And my brothers are the only people in this world that will hate this record, as you know, because I, they're like 22 and 24 and they're cool, you know, and Christmas is not cool right now in their life. And I make them listen to Christmas music all the time. Like November hits, I'm like, it's time when I'm, when I'm in Perth, it's time. Uh, but I love Christmas. I love it. I have so many amazing memories. Um, my dad every year would be there with the video camera and my mum would be with us opening presents and then as I got older me and my mum would be on the couch having a little coffee and my brothers would be opening their presents um, but yeah so this record is is amazing it's um, it's very old school sounding I was saying before like Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald they're my favourite Christmas albums and uh, Elvis as well because that's my dad's fave um, so when I was making this record I was like I want it to sound really beautiful and classic I don't think you should change Christmas music too much because that's what makes it so beautiful is is how how incredibly um, nostalgic these songs are. So I didn't want to to stray from that too much. So I went to Nashville and I recorded the record there, all live music. Um, and it's I'm really proud of it. I'm really excited about it. And I hope you guys really like it too. <laughs> oh, Sammy, thank you so much. I'm sure that has resonated with a lot of you in the room. Um, so thank you. I really I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lizzie. You're amazing. You're wonderful. We can't wait to see where the brand goes. Samantha Jade, we look forward to Christmas with Samantha Jade and everything you do in the future. You guys are amazing, inspiring, beautiful women. Thank you for joining me. 